Hello and good morning and welcome to Northminster United Church here in Calgary. Today is Sunday, September 26th, 2021. And we gather here this way, connected with bits and bites from near and far, to be together in heart and spirit as a community of faith. Our Christ candle is lit this morning, symbolizing the one who journeys with us. And we also pause in a moment of thanks, um, in gratitude, remembering that we are Treaty 7 people, that we live and work and worship and play on Treaty 7 land. Our, themes, uh, our theme for this series, these four weeks called Imagine the People of God, continues today with an image of community as compassion. Caring, uh, sharing God's love in the world. Indeed, from the very early Hebrew practices of leaving um, some of the harvest for the gleaning, for the gleaning of harvest for the poor, uh, to Jesus' commission to care for the least of these. Compassion is the truest measure of community for the body of Christ. Our scripture asks us today, is your heart tender and compassionate? What will the answer be? And what will we discover about how good life can be when compassion is at the core? Let's sing. Imagine, imagine Let's now join together in a moment of prayer. Let's pray. Creative God, whose vision of justice and mercy ignites our compassion, we thank you for each one of us who is together in this time of worship, for the unique gifts we each have, for the dreams we have for the world. Use these gifts, God, to empower our creative engagement with the world so that we can move into the future, inviting anticipation with hope of the many possibilities that you have for us. Empower us all to imagine and create anew our lives and our communities as we live out our call to be your creative and compassionate people, reflecting the image of you, our creator. Amen. So for our conversation time today, I want to talk a little bit about, um, about humility and how we need each other. And that's the message for today. And that's what Paul was talking about in our scripture, which we'll hear a bit later um, from Philippians, um, that God has given us each individual and unique gifts, and we have been showered with God's grace. 
And despite all that, all the things we're blessed with, we still always have to remember that we need each other. And, you know, I think we can think about so many situations where that is exactly the case, where we need each other. And we've learned this time, in, in this time of the pandemic, just how true that is. Suddenly, when we're isolated for all these months, when we're missing our, our church friends and school friends, when we're no longer just shoulder to shoulder with colleagues in the office, or when we're missing the face-to-face -face connections and opportunities at the coffee shop or a restaurant or whatnot, we realize just how much we really do need each other when that's suddenly missing from our lives. So here I've got a flashlight. I wanna maybe use this flashlight today to talk a little bit about just how important it is that we have each other around us. So I've got this flashlight here and I've got some batteries, three batteries here. And I thought what we might do as we're talking about this is let's put some names on these batteries. So I've got, let's, let's just do it this way. We've got three batteries and we're going to put three different names on each battery. So here we've got this first one. Can you see what it says? If I, if I take one and I'm going to put this on it. Can you see that? It says me. So I'm going to put the name tag me on one of our batteries. Okay. Let's do one more. This next one says, what do you guess? Here's the next one. I don't know if you can see them on the camera. Sometimes it's hard. This next one says you. Okay, so that's the second battery. And our last one, what would it be? What do you think? Get it just the right length for these little AAA batteries we've got that are rolling off the table. Here's the third one. Our next one is others, other people, people around us. All right, so we've got you and me, and we have others. So let's see, we open this up, this, uh, this flashlight, because right now, look, not working, right? No batteries in it. Let's see what we can put inside. So the other thing I learned when I stopped to think about it is that most flashlights need more than one battery. It's hard to find um, flashlights that need just one battery. So let's make sure I get this right. Put these in the right way. Let's put this one here. I'm going to put... I'm going to put me in first. Let's put me in this here. And I'm going to put it in the flashlight. And we're going to get the flashlight working. Are we? Hmm. Let's see. Nope. Just one battery, just me. Doesn't work by itself, does it? Okay, let's add the next one. Let's add, let's add you next. Let's see. This one's got to go this way. Okay, so we've got me and you now in here together. Back in it goes again. Put on the lid. Let's get it working, right? Nope, still not working. There's still room for more in here. So we still need to remember that there's you and there's me, but there's also others. There's other people around us. And like I said before, we often think that we can do this all by ourselves, right? We think God's given us gifts. We know how to use our gifts, um, that we should be able to do everything all by ourselves. And what we do need to remember, and that's what humility is, is remembering that God also gives us other people. And so God gives you gifts and me gifts, but they're gifts of others around us, that when we come together, the light shines, doesn't it? The light shines when all of our gifts come together. And I say it's our light, but really it's God's light, isn't it? That it's our gifts shining and reflecting God's light in the world. 
So Philippians, which is the scripture we're going to hear in a few minutes, is really all about that. It's about humility and remembering that it's not just us, but it's about others. It's about the people around us. It's about remembering that we need each other and, and how important that is, that that's, that's what humility is, and that's what is invited to us in our scripture um, So we're going to hear a beautiful song now from the choir, and then we're going to hear those words that Paul shared with the Philippians of how Paul was encouraging that working together, that coming together, that fellowship and friendship together, and how that message is just still um, still so true for us today. So thank goodness me and you and all the others, we make God's light shine. Let's now hear this song from our choir. Our reading on this September 26th is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. 
When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. There are times in our lives when we grasp all at once just how important unity is. It may be times when we're at a meal around a table with family or, or with friends and we're, or at, we're at some sort of gathering with those people in our lives when we see everyone there conversing, you know, like happy to be together in one another's company. You know, it could be those moments where there's still past differences or misunderstandings, and they might still be underlying there a bit. That, you know, they haven't completely vanished. But in that time of being together, they just sort of lose their strength. They lose their importance as these bonds of shared affection are, are celebrated, that togetherness. Such experiences like that really are privileged moments. They're almost sacred feeling. And if you've had that experience, you'll know exactly what I mean, how that feels in that special time of being together. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, which Barb just read for us, and I talked about it earlier, Paul speaks at length about both unity and about joy. He also speaks openly about the affection that he has for the Philippians and, and then also their concern for him. Their relationship goes back to the very beginning of his travels in the region and they'd welcomed him and they'd shared with him um, and you know, they'd, they'd welcome the message he was sharing in that early time of Christianity and then had that continued support and encouragement for him through all that had followed in that time period. The tone of the letter is one of um, familiarity and, and confidence for each other as among people who've really learned how to share their lives and how to appreciate one another. We sense in that how the gospel has turned strangers into friends, and we might even say into family. Paul, however, is, is worried by news that he has received about conflicts within this young community. He responds by inviting them to take even closer to heart the gifts they had already received. His words seem very carefully chosen, no doubt to make a lasting impression on his readers. He then evokes by contrast some of the root causes of their division and then finally returns, like that full circle way of telling a story, to the image of having the same mind. Only now, this mind is not theirs, but it's Christ's mind, Christ's way. A commentator I read this week wrote about an experience, an experience she had when she sat down with a group of leaders in a congregation a few months ago. And in this particular situation, at least to start, they were really not of same mind, and that's why she'd been brought in to have these conversations with them. This particular place, like many, had had its share of struggles. Indeed, those people who had come together that night shared that the congregation as a whole just wasn't very nice. They were, by then, sitting on actually 50 years of conflict. 
and even more, and their dealings with one another had become downright abrasive. They began the meeting with prayer and then read together these words from Philippians. After they sat with it for a few minutes, Jeanette, this commentator, said, what would this congregation be like if it looked like these words of the Apostle Paul? Oh, charismatic, one person replied. Another offered, exciting. Yet another suggested they would surely be just more welcoming. The rest sat and nodded, one or two with even tears in their eyes. These words, of course, speak of the work of Jesus, the work of Jesus on our behalf. They describe Jesus giving over all that he did, including his life. But Paul does not quote what must have been at this point familiar words with those gathered for the sake of only reminding them of this marvelous gift of God. No, this gift of God was given in order to actually change them. Right at the beginning of this section, Paul writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And so it's worth noting, it seems to me, that the you here is actually plural. This was not meant to be taken as just an undertaking for an individual alone, but rather this is something that we seek to be and do together. In the most basic sense, this automatically calls for more than one. This text is so appropriate for the times where a group is called to change as they hear a call to be about new things, about the future, about looking ahead, about important things upcoming. It almost goes without saying that such opportunities, because they're not always welcomed or anticipated, but that such opportunities can tend to stir us up. They spark emotion in us about what's next. And because of that, they even can result in conflict, even when conflict is something most of us would rather just avoid. And yes, unfortunately, even as we know, religion can be polarizing. I don't know if you remember this, but I told you a story a few years ago about another United, or another um, preacher, writer, commentator, Will Willimon. You probably know that name. And he told this story about his very first church. He says, these are his words, I, was, I thought of the very first church I served. I was a student at Emory at the time. I drove out to the church on Saturday to meet with the lay leader. He met me at this little one-room church, then named Friendship Methodist Church. That's a misnomer if there ever was one. I got there before my host, so I thought I'd go into the church and look around. But I was surprised by this big padlock and chain barring the front door. When the lay leader arrived, I said, Oh, glad you're here to open the lock on the door. Oh, that ain't our lock. The sheriff put that there, explained the lay leader. Things got rough here at the meeting last month. Folks started yelling at each other, carting off the furniture and other things they donated to the church over the years. So I called the sheriff, and he came out here, and he put that lock on the door until the new preacher could get here and settle them down. (laughs) I gulped, Will Willimon says, my first church. (laughs) So... Yes, so as much as we speak of and look to a way of life that is peace-filled, hope-filled, harmonious despite diversity, things don't always go the way Paul was encouraging in today's scripture. However, by starting with these words of Paul, by listening deeply to the passage by sitting with another whom we don't know well, by answering basic questions about 
what surprised us or what we might want to know more about. And by listening, just listening to the other, somehow in this, we find ourselves living little by little into the mind of Christ. Dwelling in the word is often what we might call this. It's not a trick, of course. It's not even a real process. It is simply just what you and I, who understand ourselves to be followers of Jesus, might be called to do. It is, in fact, a habit which calls us back to what we believe most deeply. And habits, of course, can change us. Habits, of course, always do. I don't ever know how Will Willimon's church turned out after that padlock um, discovery. But Jeanette, the first church I made reference to, was back with her congregation a few weeks later. They had been working hard at listening deeply to one another. And near the end of their time together, when it came time to share with a larger group, one of the leaders asked a woman at their table if she would share what she had shared with the smaller group. Would you please share this with the large group? And so she did. And as she spoke, she, she shared of how she and her mother had begun worshiping in that congregation about six months before. She spoke of the welcome they had received. She told about how they felt at home in that place among those people. And as people listened to her, their eyes, their eyes were just shining all over the place. Smiles were literally turning to tears of gratitude and surprise, hearing what that woman had said about her experience of their church. People were left renewed and were ready to keep seeking to, as Scripture says, let the mind of Christ be more and more reflective of who they were in that place together. I believe sometimes that God hands us things like this. In one woman's sharing that day, she gave back to people, those dear people, that certain truth that they were becoming exactly what they hoped they could be. It was certain affirmation of what God can do among us. And what we have to do then is to let it happen, to be open to it. Or at least that's how the lesson from Philippians begins, to let it happen. But we have to remember that doesn't mean we can be passive in the the process. The letting only happens as we allow ourselves to be shaped and to be changed in the very real ways by the one who gave himself. Surely this can begin by listening deeply to ancient words such as those shared by Paul with his congregation at Philippi. Surely this can be so as we seek to do the same for each other. Oh yes, surely God is still at work among us, even here, even now. Amen. Let's sing. Touch our minds and teach us how to read.
truth and wisdom come touch and bless our minds come touch us in the moments we are fragile and in our weakness your great strength reveal that we may rise to follow touch and bless our wills. During the prayers of the people, we invite you to share your prayers, what is on your heart and mind this morning. Please do uh, type your prayers into the comment section of Facebook, and we'll Hold those prayers with you and lift them to God together. Let us pray. God, you are a God of compassion and love. Time after time, we have experienced your care and your provision. Time after time, you've answered our prayers and met our needs, often in ways we could never have dreamed possible. We praise you for your faithful love toward us. We see so much pain and suffering, so much anger and frustration and despair and division. It's easy, God, to feel overwhelmed by the needs around us, but we continue to bring our prayers to you in faith because we know that nothing is impossible for you. You are the God who rained bread from heaven and made water flow from a rock in the desert. The God who brought Jesus to life, who restores hope to all who believe. For you, all things are possible. God, we hold in prayer those suffering the effects of recent natural disasters. We pray for regions of our world caught up in violence and threats of violence. We pray for those who live with serious illness, those with chronic pain, those without access to proper medical care, those for whom treatment is no longer an option. We pray this day, especially for our strained health care system, for the people who work there, for the feelings of being overwhelmed, that they might feel and find relief and renewal in their calling as they care for those who need them. God, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to show us a different way to live, that we might be of one mind with him, that we might be and live the way of humility and compassion. You've called us to love one another and to work together with one heart and mind, balancing our needs with the needs of those around us. Give us courage to follow faithfully, with integrity, with actions that bear witness to the words we speak. And worship that overflows into our daily tasks and our relationships. This morning in our prayers... Uh, Dawn is asking for prayers for her friend Shirley starting 18 weeks of chemo. We hold her in prayer. A prayer from Eva. Eva is asking for prayers for those who are feeling trapped at home, alone, or who are living fearfully. We also ask for continued prayers for Dawn and Jane Borbridge as they are recovering well at home from, from COVID. 
Jan is lifting in prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving, that the Michaels are safely home, and gratitude for all those throughout the world who worked for this. And Ron and Joanne are um, holding in prayer, a prayer of thanks for all the prayers and support for baby Sophia, that she is now home without tubes or supports. And even that little baby got to make a trip to visit her great-grandparents. For these prayers spoken, for, these pra- for all of the prayers that we hold in our hearts, for situations in our own lives, or things going on around us for those we know, or concerns in the world, we, we hold all those prayers with care and entrust them to God. God, we love you, for you hear these voices holding and lifting prayers. And as we do this, we now join our voices together in saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our mother, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Northminster Uh, again, extends its deepest gratitude to the ways that you continue to make giving to Northminster a priority in your life. We thank you for your generosity and say again how all your gifts matter and make a difference. Let us now pause in prayer to bless our offerings. Let's pray. Generous God, You have shown us what it means to love as you call us to follow your example to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Continue to write your law of love and compassion on our hearts. Give us an unwavering thirst for justice, a tenacious faith that will not rest until the hungry are fed, the oppressed find relief, and the world knows firsthand your compassion. Amen. So a few announcements. You are likely all reading the Friday emails that come out from the office, as well a newsletter for the whole fall season went out about a week ago now. So hope you're taking time to read all the amazing information. Um, enjoy the graphics that Marianne puts together for us of all the wonderful things happening at Northminster. I'll highlight just a few of them today. This coming Thursday is September 30th. The federal government has declared this day a a holiday uh, for intentional reflection on truth and reconciliation. Um, In line with the United Church of Canada and Chinook Winds region, you would have read in that fall newsletter that the board has decided um, that Northminster will also be closed on the 30th. So the office will not be open this coming Thursday. In that fall newsletter are a number of links and ideas and resources for how you can be intentional on September 30th. And I think we'll even email that out again this week ahead of Thursday. But please do take some time of why this day is important. What is the United Church's role in the history of of, um, residential schools? What we are doing to go forward to make things right as part of our ongoing apology and how this has had so, um, so many lasting impacts, generational impacts on um, the people um, who experienced it firsthand and beyond. So, so do take time to be intentional on September 30th this week. A week from today, this, uh, this, this Sunday, October 3rd, so a week from now, we're going to have a movie night. Um, 
as part of Affirming Ministries conversations. So please sign up at the office for this. Then you'll get a Zoom link where we can, um, we can greet each other and have some conversation before and after the movie. And you'll also get a Zoom link where you can, um, or a YouTube link where you'll be able to watch the movie that night. Um, it's actually a worship service from our pride service back in September where um, not just Christian churches, but even Muslim and Jewish churches came together um, to, to, to celebrate pride and come out in faith, as the theme said. So please register at the office this week for those links. And looking about a month ahead, we are having a women's retreat this fall out at Kasota East Camp um, with plenty of space for, for safety protocols and um, much space in the weekend for you to do what you need the weekend to be, um, space to, to enjoy, to reflect, to read, to craft, um, to be together in community. So make note of that. Please register through the office, and we look forward to being able to have a women's retreat this fall. All the other announcements, as I said, please read them in your weekly email and in the fall newsletter. Coffee's on, so uh, join me on Zoom today between 11.30 and 12 and message me if you need the link. And now for our blessing. This world I live in, this town I live in, this street I live in, this house I live in, may each be the focus of our prayer. Those I live with, those I rub shoulders with, those I work with, those I don't get on with, may each be the focus of our grace. Those who laugh, those who cry, those who, <clears throat> those who hurt, those who hide, may each be the focus of our compassion. So let us leave this time. Our lives be likewise centered, less on self and more on God, and through you to the world in which we live and move. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for worshiping together here this morning. And we look forward to being together soon. Let's sing. Bye for now. There'll be sunshine. children.